everybody and welcome to this next episode of Creativity in Progress. I just want to say thank you to everyone for the feedback so far on last week's episode um, and also for the title suggestions but I'm quite happy I think now we're keeping it Creativity in Progress um, because I don't want it to be too personal to me uh, because I want to be able to share other people's stories and other people's journeys over time and talk about so many different topics and subjects um, so yeah I just want to kind of keep it like it is I think um, but I don't I still feel incredibly nervous still feel really really unsure I was massively overthinking this episode today um, and kind of thinking oh my god like what am I doing um, but I think that that's kind of normal and um, because it is it's it's a really raw personal journey for me to do this it's really exposing it's really it's scary I'm not gonna lie I've had a lot of people who have emailed me um, and sort of asked different questions and kind of wanted me to talk about certain things that I will talk about um, but some of the things are incredibly personal to me and it's just been a really daunting kind of experience to be sharing this side to my story that I think a lot of people hopefully will resonate with and um, it will be quite what's the word um, relatable um, to some people but yeah it is it is hella daunting it is hella scary I can't lie um, but today I want to discuss the subject of rejection which is something I have faced a lot over my professional and personal life but I think definitely it's like today I want to talk about it in the field of being an artist and the amount of rejection that us as creatives tend to face um, and that doesn't just go for you know your friends and family that goes in actually in the art community as well um, and I just want to sort of take a deep dive tell you a little bit about the things that have happened to me and over the years um, just as always I kind of want these episodes to be a really open space a really safe space for us to have these discussions and maybe you'll be able to see a little bit of yourself or your own journey in the stories that I tell um, so I want to start off by kind of going all the way back to school um, I loved art at school until I got to college and I think the funny thing is is that in fact I chose the college that I wanted to go to so if you're in America it's it would be like high school I don't even know how it works in America to be honest I don't even know why I started going down that route because I don't know how your schooling system works um, but between the ages of 16 and 18 in the UK we go to college so when I left sort of like secondary school and went off to college I chose that college um, for that art department so I was really really excited and it was something I really really wanted to kind of pursue at that point um, but I actually failed art at college just purely because they wanted me to do more abstract work and I was very structured and all I wanted to do was draw and do realistic horse portraits for friends and family and um, yeah so I actually failed art at school which or at college which is quite funny to say now um, so that was my very first experience of having a professional in the industry tell me that my art wasn't very good um, and it did deter me and it did put me off and I did go down the corporate row, um, route of working in the motor trade and going off to uni study marketing and doing all of those like quote unquote normal things that we do as young adults um, and then obviously if you've listened to last week's episode you'll know about a little bit more about my story um, and how I kind of fell into this as a job um, which I, yeah just if you haven't watched last week's episode please go back and give it a listen because um, I, I do say that I fell into this job but it's because of mental health and things like that and art always calmed me down so it's kind of forced me down a route of being super passionate about being a creative and because drawing for me has always been something that has hugely hugely grounded me and kept me on the straight and narrow a lot of the time um, so once I had had all those prints created for um, by that company and spent all of my inheritance on that and all sort of every single penny I, I, I had on those prints obviously I was floundering then I didn't have a clue what I was going to do I was really really struggling with my mental health um, I was on antidepressants at the time and I 
heard about a local publishers so they had a gallery they would go to different um country shows and they had a whole range of artists on their books that they would market for create prints for and everything like that so I took my port I had booked a meeting with them um, again had no experience and had no clue how anything like this worked but I contacted them I sent them some examples of my work by email they were like yep please come in we'll have a, a meeting anyway went met uh, drove over there met one of the directors took my whole portfolio and I took some of the prints and he spent about an hour with me and I was really really I I was really young then but I was about 22 um, and he spent an hour with me and basically told me to find another medium to work with because coloured pencil took too long and no one would pay the money for coloured pencil work and it wasn't recognised within the art community or the art industry and I should learn to paint with oils basically because that's where the money was um, and if I wanted to have a, a business in art then I needed to come away from coloured pencil or at least work with it was doing something that I could basically create on a, on a large scale so they could have a, like big pit, uh, big pictures and big frames up in their gallery because obviously coloured pencil work is, tends to be a little bit smaller than obviously big oil paintings so he basically told me to go away and learn a new medium um, and unfortunately they weren't interested in my work at all and again I did go down the route of experimenting and trying different mediums and spending you know the money that I was earning from the pub buying various different like oil painting um, paints acrylics pastels honestly if you saw my conservatory downstairs it's just got every single I think medium in it just because again I have tried so many things over the years but I've always 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 come back to coloured pencil and I've always come back to drawing horses as well I have gone down and kind of explored different routes and different avenues um I remember obviously when I was in the motor trade I was drawing cars for a while um but horses was horses and animals and drawing dogs was always something I was incredibly passionate about so that was definitely something I went back to um every single time I kind of strayed away but obviously hearing that you're never going to make it as a coloured pencil artist is really really like disheartening because it was the thing that I loved the most and it was hard at the time because I felt like I was in a little bit of a rut I was charging 100 200 pound for a commission depending on obviously the size um, and I was obviously fortunate enough to be living with my parents still so I didn't know I didn't have like a mortgage and I didn't have any expensive bills or anything like that but um, and I was obviously still working at the pub and so I was I was doing okay but I didn't know how to kind of elevate my art to the next level and actually make it into a full-time career um, and as I kind of touched upon last week I was feeling really really incredibly lost because a lot of my friends were going off to uni or had just completed uni were getting sort of like really good corporate jobs and getting a full salary and I had obviously spent so much money on these prints and was in a huge amount of debt from the university that I dropped out of and was just really, really struggling with knowing what to do with my life. And it just seemed like such a massive leap to go from charging 100, 200 pound and getting, you know, two commissions a month to having a full time wage. And sort of like looking forward at that point then, I was very much like, okay, I'm in my early 20s but at some point I'm going to need to buy a house and at some point I'm going to want to you know be a bit of an adult and move out and do everything that I you know I need to do but how on earth am I going to do that when I'm charging this amount of money and it just seemed impossible but also I was incredibly stuck in my own head because I knew that I was so much further behind than than the rest of my peers who had gone off and finished university and you know had qualifications under their belt and I didn't even have any A level so I was like I'm gonna have to go back and like restudy and retrain and you know I just everything just felt a lot it, it was I don't know how else to kind of describe it I, I felt this immense pressure um and I felt really really stuck um so I continued going down the route of doing commission work and just earning a little bit of money at the pub um and I was started doing some original pieces and trying to make some prints. At this point, I had found another printer who 
is still the supplier and still the um the my sort of like main frame and supplier that I use to this day and I absolutely adore them they are local to me and they have helped me so so much in the past um and still do to this day they're incredible people they're incredibly supportive I'm very very lucky that I found them when I did um so I started doing some original work they were printing it for me I was but and and the, the great thing about the way they were printing it is they were printing it to demand so it wasn't like the company before that was like you need to print x amount of pieces otherwise we're not going to do it so i ended up with like hundreds of prints that i wasn't wasn't able to market properly because i didn't understand the business side of it um but the company that i found after that were very very just chill about the whole thing and they were cheaper they were just the quality was insane and just really nice people who aren't actually understood how difficult it is for artists so I had well, I was also working with another framer at the time who worked with big publishers and when I say a big publisher it's a bit like the company I was telling you about just a couple of minutes ago but the big publisher that um some of the big publishers that were they were using in this framers had big galleries on big high streets in London and all the rest of it so I'd done this um original drawing of these foxhounds and they had it on the side because they were uh, framing a print up for me in, in the framers and the next thing I know I received an email from I'm not going to obviously talk about any company names because I'm yeah I'm not going to do that um but there was a very very large publishing company um who are in most cities um here in the UK and I got an email from them and they said we've seen your work we've looked at your website we absolutely like we think it's amazing could you drive up to us and they were about three hours away can you come up to us let us know when you're available we would love to have you in we'd like to discuss opportunities for you to be an artist for us all the rest of it obviously I was like oh my god like I this is insane like this is one of the largest publishers in the UK they've got these like multi-million pound clients I was like oh my god this is insane like incredible what an opportunity so again I packaged up all my portfolio drove up to um their main headquarters they showed me around they gave me like a really nice tour and they were just really nice people and the the building was beautiful the artwork was insane they sat me down they were telling me about some of their clients they had top footballers and they were like oh you know we've taken artists from um working in really small kind of at home studios and we're now doing this for them and they they these artists used to be charging this amount but now we can sell their work for you know tens of thousands of pounds and again as a naive person i heard these figures and i was like oh my goodness this would be insane um i've actually like if they want me this would be amazing um and obviously i was like well they've approached me so hopefully i'm kind of in with a chance um anyway I sat down in their boardroom and they took out all the pieces of work and there was two or three how many there was two of them um because the third person couldn't make it that day and they were going through my portfolio and they were like yeah this is the piece we've seen a couple of your pieces and we we do really like your style we really like what you do we're just wondering if you could just potentially draw what you do or maybe maybe just do it a bit differently you know you're very you're very um I can't remember exactly the word they they used but they were they basically told me I wasn't commercial enough um and I was very much a commission-based artist because all my drawings were very tight they were very rigid they were you know they were definitely someone's horse they weren't commercial it wasn't um a piece of work that they could put in their gallery and you know it would be anyone's horse if that makes sense it wasn't an equestrian piece of art it was someone's horse um so they were like maybe if you just like loosened your edges a bit or you change this or maybe try and work in a different medium and I was like I've heard this before and they were like well maybe you should um try to work on a different color so, um uh, uh, on background different colors you know, just go away with an experiment because we really like you we really like your work but we just think that you'd be more suited to us if you did this and obviously I went away and was like okay well I need to change who I am and what I do and everything like that so I spent about two months again ramped up my hours at the pub 
um, put my commissions on on hold. I spent two months sending various different um, pieces of work, always animal related, but I was using pastels, I was using charcoal, I was using oils. I was just, I was sending them so much every single time. They're like, no, sorry, it's not quite what we're looking for. No, sorry, it's not quite. And this went on for yeah, two months. And they kept rejecting every single work piece of work I, I sent to them. And I was so despondent. I was so upset. I was like, well, you contacted me. And I was, you know, I didn't obviously get angry at them. But I was just internally just like, again, I was like, I'm not good enough. I all that was the whole thing that was going through my head. I was like, I wasn't good enough academically. I wasn't good enough for, you know, the first publishers. I wasn't good enough for this publishers. I've been, I've lost all my money. I was just like, I was just, again, another time when I was completely, not at rock bottom, but I was definitely kind of struggling to see a way forward. Um, and it, this was when I kind of approached my local framers, who, again, I was really, really close to. And they kind of sat me down and said, why they were like Beth why are you trying to change yourself like why are you trying to change who you are and what you do just for a large publishers and I was like well because they've promised me the earth and they've said that they can put me into galleries and they are you know I can do this and they can do this for me and they were like but are you happy doing what you do like on your own and I was like yeah I, I like doing the commission work and I like working in colored pencil and I don't really think I can change from that that's what I know and Paul was like well why are you trying to change it then? Um, and he was like, I think that your best option is to kind of sit down and, and work out how to market yourself a bit better. And actually, if you, this is the career path you want to go down, don't don't let anyone else sway you. Um, just because these big professionals are telling you to do something and that, that your your work won't get recognised as a colour pencil artist or it takes too long and you can't charge enough. He was like, says who? Like, just don't listen to anyone else's narratives because they're not in your position. They don't know your story. They just know what works for them as a publishers. And that's not going to be, that's that's not the person you are. So don't try and change to be someone that you're not just to suit someone else. So I was like, right, yeah, you're right. Um, and it was a real sort of like pivotal moment, I guess, for me. Um, and I started researching more marketing options. I started looking a bit more at social media um, and utilizing social media and Facebook and Instagram and started posting a lot more on there and you know various different platforms to try and just get grow an audience um, and I was also doing local tax sales and tax and sort of craft fairs and when I say local tax sales these were like the car boot sales of the horsey world so you know they were very much just £10 for a table and I would display some of my work um, and again people go go in there to sort of buy head collar for Fiverr they weren't really expected to see art but I was honestly just wanting to do any sort of marketing possible just to get my name out there um, and between doing all of that and utilising social media and doing a couple of craft markets where I just sold a, you know, I'd sell a, a handful of greetings cards or you know I wouldn't even sell any prints that it was just just greetings cards but I was just happy to have my work out and about and just give me a little bit of confidence that people were beginning to recognize what I was putting out there um, and it started the ball like it started the um, the ball rolling a little bit more with commissions and I slowly started to raise my prices um, so every time that I'd get full for or get busy for a month or two then I'd you know, increase my prices by like 20 pound um, and then over time again you could just the busier I got the more I could kind of increase but I was really really pushing social media as hard as I could at that point um, but of course there was extreme moments of serious serious doubt and questioning everything which to be honest I think is so normal and I I do believe that without those moments of doubt you would be completely delusional and, and you'd be like yeah everything's fine but I think you do have to kind of look at the times when you are struggling and you do you know you don't really see a way out and that's the moment where it's like you have to really fight for what you believe in I knew at this point that I didn't want to go and work for anyone else and that me in the workplace it just caused me so much anxiety that even like the thought of going in for an interview and being scrutinized by somebody else I just I couldn't do it and um I know that's completely normal for a lot of people but there's someone who has really really struggled with their mental health for years and years and years and faced a lot over the years I was just 
it just wasn't something I was willing to sort of put myself out for and just to get you know potentially rejected again um or feel, feel like I'm not good enough so um yeah it's it was a really really lonely journey and I think being an artist can be incredibly incredibly lonely and you do face a lot of self-doubt and a lot of moments where you just think what on earth am I doing and how on earth am I going to make it but those are the moments that a lot of the time you do have a bit of a pivotal moment and you're like okay well I'm pushed up against a wall now either I give up and I quit or I find a way to make it work and to be honest I now kind of embrace that difficult those difficult times because they are the moments that something pivotal does tend to happen and you know I tend to an analogy I actually I've learned a long time ago and I really really like is business and life is like a bit of a trampoline so you've got to come down before you go back up you've got to come down to build momentum to push yourself back up and I think that's so so true so with the work that we're putting out there and the work that I'm doing um, it doesn't always have to make sense and you have moments where you feel like you're not making any progress and you're not really progressing at all. You feel stagnant, you feel lost, you feel confused. But they are, you've got to kind of realise that that's the moment that you're coming down to build momentum to go back up. Um, so yeah, that's my sort of like little analogy, but I really love that and I think it's so, so true. Um, so another thing that I kind of wanted to talk about is the loneliness and I know I just touched on it just then but the loneliness that we experience as creatives um, a lot of people won't understand that and don't understand that and that's completely completely fine I lost quite a few friends um, and uh, some people who are really close to me because they just didn't understand the entrepreneurial side of what I was trying to do you know the when we're doing the job that we do and we're doing the job that not only is in front of us but also on our phones and on our you know social media um it's around us all the time and my parents are now pretty good at sort of realizing that okay she's on her phone she's probably working but it's difficult to put in boundaries and it's something that you kind of have to learn to not let your creative work consume you um but i think it is it is kind of normal to lose people along the way you can't be afraid to lose people it's perfectly okay that they're not on the same path and they're not aligned to the same journey and the same sort of destination as you uh, because you will meet people along the journey and along your creative path that will fill your cup up so much and will just be the people who will support you and be there for you and just help you more ways than one I've lost as I said so many people on the way but I've met some truly 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 incredible people who have helped you know who helped me in my darkest of moments when I'm really sort of self having moments of self-doubt and they get it they understand the struggle it doesn't necessarily always mean they're artists you know they could be anyone but having your you're finding your people and having your people around you that know when you're sad and know that it's okay for you to have moments of self-doubt and don't tell you oh it's all right like tomorrow's going to be a better day because sometimes that's not what we need to hear we need someone to kind of sit with us and go it is quite shit at the moment to be honest and that's okay um you know better days are coming but you kind of have to embrace those feelings um and I think having people around you that understand how lonely the creative entrepreneurial life is sometimes and actually giving you space to just be you know sometimes I can't reply to texts or messages or anything for days because I'm just in this little bubble where I feel like I'm in fight or flight mode and I'm like okay I just need to figure things out on my own for a while and my friends understand that and the people who don't understand that are no longer in my life and that's absolutely fine because as I said, you do meet some incredible people on this creative journey. And a lot of people, you know, you meet, you, I've met one of my best friends in the art world through Instagram. Um, and Amy, if you're listening to this, hello. Um, <laughs> so yes, um, but what I would say as well is not everyone is gonna like you. And that's again, another hard lesson to kind of learn and navigate. And you know, when we are creators and when we're artists, we are putting ourselves out there in, in a really, really vulnerable way. We're creating pieces of work that, you know, we're, we're taking a bit of paper and we're creating a piece of work and we're putting a piece of ourselves out there. And when it comes to marketing, you're actually putting that work out there online as well. And that is quite scary. 
it is quite scary and that's okay it's okay to feel scared and it's okay to not know you know how things are gonna go um but you have to be brave and you have to just you know go right okay i'm just gonna put it out there and see what happens and i'm just gonna be consistent with putting it out there and who knows what the future holds um but not everyone is gonna like you and not everyone's gonna like your work and again that's perfectly okay um, it's perfectly okay for you to lose followers if you start putting yourself out there a little bit more because those people just aren't your people and this is the hardest hardest lesson I think that I have to learn as well and it's something that I really really do struggle with because even putting myself out there like this is terrifying because there are people who won't understand me they won't understand my work they won't understand you know they will maybe have seen my work online but won't knew me as a person and won't like my personality and won't like the way I present myself and won't like the way that I do th- certain things um and that you know they they won't watch or they'll unfollow or you know they might send me and I yeah I, I don't want to say a nasty email but there has been even times in the past where something I've done has provoked a, a response and it's, I'm never someone who's a like a um what's the word a confrontational person I'm very very careful about the way and what I speak about and of course talking about mental health issues online or talking about deep subjects that we're talking about it is going to provoke a reaction in people and as I said not everyone is going to like me or the content I put out and not everyone's going to like you and that's absolutely fine that's completely completely normal but yeah it's it's really really okay not to have all the answers and to not have everything figured out and you know you're entitled to change you're entitled to change your work you're entitled to change as a person I'm not definitely not the same person that I was five years ago and that's another reason why you know not everyone's going to stay in your life um and the people who grow with you are your people and who accept that you will change and you will grow and I'm definitely not the same person as I was when I was in my early 20s not only because obviously I've grown up as as a woman now but I'm definitely a lot more astute when it comes to business and running this business and understanding my clients and understanding my my um, customers a little bit more and the people who watch me understanding their needs and just being a lot more rigid with boundaries and actually who I let into my life and who's good for me and who's bad for me but those are you know lessons that we do learn over time and I think you have to kind of be willing to learn and adapt as things change and as you you know you've got to embrace that change you've got to be willing to maybe have a step back and go okay I'm not going to give up but how am I going to fight this and how am I going to come back stronger because from everything I've kind of told you about so far there has been a lot of hard times and there's been a lot of times of self-doubt and rejection and there has been so many times that I've literally sat on the floor and cried and just been like I don't want to do this anymore I need to give this up like I don't know what else I'm going to do but I I don't want to do this anymore and it's okay to have those feelings and it's okay to have those moments of self-doubt and you you know those are the hardest times but if you come back I promise you will be 10 times stronger and I think that that's one of the biggest lessons that you've just got to kind of just not get a bit of a backbone but just be like okay that's really crap what happened but the way I kind of um view things is I no matter what and maybe this is a little bit delusional for me maybe it is but one of the things that I really really like to try and do is no matter how awful a situation no matter how bad something's happened or something you know has yeah something's happened um I will always 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 try and look at just one positive from it and just think so like for example if something like me losing or me sort of getting involved with that company that that um I spent all of my money on those prints for them not to sell I learned so much through doing that I learned so much about myself I learned about it made me so much more astute when it comes to business I taught myself everything you know I was very cautious moving forward I'm really in a way glad that happened I'm glad I went to uni because I met some of my best friends and no matter that I got into 20,000 pounds worth of debt it's fine because I met some so do you see what I'm saying like no matter how bad a situation is at the time or the moments when you want to burn everything to the ground 
I'm you know just be if even if it's just you say you've done five commissions and you've got you know you you're struggling with one just remember that you've done four amazing pieces of work and why would this one be any different um and it's okay to sort of like put your pencils down or put your paintbrush down for a moment and come back to it when you're feeling a little bit more positive like but just remember that you've done four pieces of amazing work so again just try and see the positives in everything and it just it, again a lot of it comes down to mindset and you really do have to kind of be strong with your mindset which is again something else that we're going to talk about in a later episode um but you kind of have to yeah you have to kind of learn and adapt as you go and also think outside the box not everything is going to make sense and you don't need to have all the answers but you can't you kind of got to be a little bit fluid I feel like with business and with this journey and if someone says to you no you can't do that like my parents again are incredibly supportive now but up until recently or up until probably about three four years ago my mom's favorite line was go and get a proper job or you know go, go you know maybe maybe update your cv and it was those moments of doubt from her that i'd go no nah, i'm gonna make this work 100 percent. i need to make this work and you kind of need to think outside the box a little bit um and not there's no one shoe fits all approach for this at all um and there's no one shoe that, that if i can't speak there's no one approach that's going to suit your you or your art or anything at all there are so many different ways to make money or to be an artist to, in today's generation we have so many options at our fingertips we have you know social media uh, it, dep- it obviously depends what sort of person you are whether you are introverted or whether you're more extroverted whether you like to go out and about and do craft shows and trade fairs and all the rest of it or um, whether you would like to build something online or social media or maybe you want to teach or maybe you want to go down sort of like the business side of it or maybe you want to own a gallery you know matter what there's so many options Um, and I know a lot of the time it can be really really difficult when you're starting out to kind of know what path you want to take but again you don't need to have it all figured out just take you know you don't have to see the whole staircase you just need to take the first step and I think that's a really really apt and a really really true um sort of phrase for this um and my sort of biggest piece of advice is to just whatever you do and no matter like how bad things get or no matter how much you feel like you want to quit just stay consistent because it's that consistency that will really really pay off over time and just whatever you do don't let anyone knock you um no matter whether it's friends family partner um people who don't believe in you because this is your journey and we're here for one time and one time only and if you want to be a creative don't let anyone stop you being a creative because that is your superpower so that was my little rant that was my little ramble i did post on my instagram stories the other day that i wanted to do a little bit of a q and a well i was just going to take one question um, at the end and I've got my question from one of my lovely lovely followers um, who I absolutely adore Floor, hello so she asked did you ever say no to a commission client because anxiety took over and I think the only way I can answer this is by saying yeah 100% because even now I still get incredibly anxious when it comes to sending off final proofs for clients of the commission work like it's something i get really really nervous about and i think it's because we are putting a piece of ourselves out there and especially when we do commission work for somebody else they have they know their animal they know their subject matter we're working off a photo they know that animal so well and they will be able to see things that we can't see and maybe we don't know the quirks of the animal and it it's really nerve-wracking because that client's obviously got a lot of expectation and i don't want to let i don't want to be negative and all just let this sort of deter anyone from being a, a pet portrait artist because again a lot of people love their animals so much and if you if they have commissioned you that's because they trust you um so that is a really really um positive thing so that that is the thing that i have to remember the, and the positive thing we take from it is these people have come to me and they have they've seen my work they like my work and they trust me to capture their animal 
Um, but of course there's extreme moments of self-doubt. And I remember when I was asked actually a few, or it was probably about six years ago, to draw a chocolate Labrador. And I restarted this piece about four times and because I just couldn't get it right. I just couldn't get the colours right. It just was so difficult. And I got so in my head about it that I had to email the client and just say, I'm really, really sorry, but I've tried so many times to restart this. I just can't do it. And I just had to be obviously really, really nice and gentle with the client and just be like, I'm really sorry, but like, I can't, I, I, I just can't do this at the moment. Um, and I, yeah, so I apologized and just had to turn the, turn the work down just because I was in my own head too much about it. Um, but I think that's the thing that I take from it now is that I'm still learning every day about business and myself and the way my brain works and the way that the business works and more about colored pencil and drawing and everything like that and there are still so many things that I really really struggle with and again these are things that I want to talk about more in further and later episodes because I think they're really really hopefully going to be helpful to other people um but yeah I really hope you have enjoyed today's episode As always, if you have any questions or would like me to talk about anything further, then let me know in the comments or send me an email. Any feedback is obviously always appreciated. There are a couple of things that I have been emailed and I'm going to save them for a further episode because as I said, uh, you know, some people, some things are quite personal and I need to kind of figure out a way to answer them in the best way possible. Um, but yeah I just wanted to obviously say thank you so so much for being here as always thank you so much for being so supportive and for letting me speak this little podcast or being part of this podcast and let me hold this space for me to tell you more about my story and hopefully in turn these little nuggets of information and my stories will help you kind of navigate your own artistic journey as well so yeah I think that's where I'm going to leave it for today Thank you so, so much for being here. I appreciate it so much, more than I can ever tell you. Um, And I can't wait to talk to you again next week. As always, send you lots of love, take care, and I'll speak to you very, very soon.